Hello, my name is Margaret Wong, and today I have an awesome, awesome guest. It's like each time I said, how do I top this one? And another top one came along. My friend's name is Miss Claudia Arasso. Please say hello to my friend here, Miss Claudia. That's awesome. So tell me a little bit about who you are. What do you do? How old are you? And what country are you from? I've heard from my management team that you are really someone we need to talk seriously to. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, well, my name is Claudia Razo, and I'm originally from El Salvador. I have been in the United States for a very long time. I think I came when I was 14 years old. And um, we, we moved from El Salvador to New York, and I went to high school there, and that's where my whole career in the health insurance industry started back in 1999. So I've been doing this for 22 years, I think. And um, what I did before, it was uh, everything that has to do with insurance, uh, state programs, you know, in every state has their budget, that way they can offer programs to different people. And um, programs come and go, and I'm the one that has been trained all of these years to see if people qualify, don't qualify. And also, I focus on the Latin market in Georgia because it's the market that um, needs a lot of understanding and a lot of help. Um, and I specialize on looking for programs to solve situations for people that has or don't have documents in the United States. That way, um, you know, they can afford to go to the hospital or, or solve their bills or things like that. Great. When you say health insurance, do you only do health insurance or you also do property insurance, um, malpractice insurance and house insurance and stuff like that? Well, we have an office in Georgia, and what do what we do is I specialize on health, but we have a financial department that does a lot to do with business. And if the client needs to get a workers' comp liability, we help them to understand how it works and to find the best price that they can get in the market. Um, but we specialize mostly on uh, health and life insurance, great and Medicare. Great. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. So how does Georgia, Mark, who's very South, who's very conservative, who's very Republican, I hope it will change in the future, versus New York, who's very liberal, of course, now it's different after the pandemic. How, how do you find a difference and why did you move to Georgia from New York? Well, I love New York, <laughs> but New York is a, a beautiful state. New York has so many programs. In New York City, a person that doesn't have documents can qualify for an emergency Medicaid easily, or there is programs in the hospitals that it goes by scale. You only pay $10 and you can even have a surgery if you need to. Um, kids that are under 19 years old they can have health insurance like pitch care in georgia but in new york it will be like medicaid it's a program that they have i think hillary clinton is the one that initiated that program um, so new york city has many many um programs because people there pay a lot of taxes you know if you work you make a lot of money but you also pay a lot of taxes so they have a lot of funds to have all of these programs um people that are going to retire it's it's new york city they can give them an apartment food stamps you know extra money it's it's a lot of help over there georgia is totally totally different uh, the lack of communication lack of information it's big in georgia uh, they don't have ads saying apply for obamacare or the marketplace or you know you go to the hospital in emergency and all they say to you is like or if you pay everything right now, we give you 80% discount. But they don't tell you that there is programs out there that you can qualify as an emergency with the state or in the hospital to cover those hospital bills because there is no information. So that's a huge thing between Georgia and New York, even with the now with, you know, Kobe, the shots, right? In New York City, they have a campaign. They even go to your house to give you the shot. That way you can have it. They even offering people, hey, if you get your shot, you know, we give you a hundred dollars, but you know, get the shot. So everything over there is more control with the, you know, with the virus. 
um, and people is is they know better. They they have more information. Over here in Georgia, that doesn't happen. Okay, so um, I decided to move back in 2005 to Georgia because um, we wanted to buy a house. In New York was very very expensive. Usually, a person like me in New York, if I buy a house, I will have to rent the basement or you know, certain areas of my house. That way I can be able to cover the mortgage. Um, and we didn't want to do that. We had two kids at that point and we're like, you know what? Uh, we need something better quality of life for the kids. And that's why we moved to Georgia because we, you know, we bought a house a year later and, and here we are. I'm so proud of you. So how old are the kids now? And what does your husband do? And does he work with you? And the more serious side is, how did you raise a family being a new immigrant and gotten married so early in life? And does your family support your decision to work so hard? Because nothing is easy for people like you and I. No, it's not. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. You know, I come from a very, very uh, a strong line of women in my family. Uh, my mom, when when I was three years old, my father passed away, and my mom, from being a housewife, had to become a self-employee. And the little money that she got from the life insurance, she had to make it and build a business out of nowhere. And she literally only had 30 days to be home crying my father after he died. Uh, and she had to start working because um, my grandmother used to live with her because um, I don't know if you know, back in the days in El Salvador in the 80s, it was a, a really, really bad situation with the government. And, uh, and you know, people was killing people. And uh, my aunt and my grandfather died in the war. And uh, my grandmother had to come and live with my mom. And then my father died a year later. So my mom was literally responsible for two little kids and my grandmother. So I had that example. She's a very successful businesswoman. Now she retired. She lives in New York still, but she's very smart with her money, you know. So I, I had a good example and, and I learned how to work since I was little. My mom was an excellent provider. I mean, even though we didn't have a father, we always lived very, very well in El Salvador. So when, when I decided, well, I got married when I was 19 and I have my daughter, it's the older one is 25. And I have my other son, he just graduated. He's um, 18 and I had two little ones. <laughs> I know my two little ones are um, 10 and eight years old. And um, my two older kids, they work in the business. They're not allowed to work anywhere else, but in the business until they can be on their own, you know? Um, and the little ones also work with us when we have events, we go and give flyers, so they take names, they, they love it. Um, they say that they are going to be the one to take over the business, that way we can retire. <laughs> oh, that is so sweet and kind. Yeah. Because my husband is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, please. My husband is the one that does um, income tax in the company. So we had the uh, solutions, which is me, uh, you know, insurance and whatever the client needs. And then we had the financial side, which is taxes. And uh, that's where we apply workers comp and things like that. Yeah. And do you compete? Because I noticed when my husband was here and we've been married for more than 30, 40 years, and I would compete with them. Maybe the younger people don't compete as much. Do you compete with your husband? And do you file one company tax return or two company tax returns? And how do you split up your, I mean, maybe it's getting personal, but how do you sp <laughs> split up what you have earned, what he's earned? And does he control you? You could buy this, you could do that. Well, you know, I'm 44, he's 44 also. So we, we don't, I don't, I don't think we compete. I don't know if you compete. I don't think so. Um, it, he's like, he says that a perfect marriage is saying, okay, or don't say anything. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. no, we don't compete. Um, money wise, the money is coming in. We both are careful uh, on what we spend. If we go overboard, then I say something or he says something. 
but no, no control. I don't, I don't like that. We will never like that. So if our families need anything, we talk about it and we go for it. Um, so yeah, in the company we have, um, you know, the company, it's, um, we filed the taxes. I filed the taxes for the company and he filed the taxes for himself. So yeah. That's awesome. And tell me also about your family, you know, your aunt, your grandfather, your father. So why were they killed and why did your father die? I mean, that's a very interesting story with such strong women in the family. My father had an excellent job. Um, you know, it was very stable for a big company in El Salvador. And um, he had a car accident, the brakes in the, in the truck that he used to drive didn't work. And he tried to survive because they were going down the hill and uh, he jumped. And when he jumped, he hit his head and he, he died. He was young, he was like 33, I think. And um, my aunt and my grandfather, uh, they were kidnapped and then they were killed in the war. Um, I think it was in 1980 uh, when that happened. It was really bad over there. Uh, our family actually tried to move and go to Canada with asylum because we were we had to leave um, the town that we used to live in and we had to go to uh, the capital to hide in a big house because they literally were saying, if you don't leave, we're gonna kill you all. So um, my, my mom has three siblings so we all have to go away from Santa Ana, which is where I'm from, uh, to be safe somewhere else, to hide, basically. But, I mean, things just make you stronger and you move forward and keep on going and don't look back. And, and that's, that's, you know, the type of life we have to live in. We have to embrace it. Mm -hmm. And after the passing of your father, uh, do you think your mom raised you as her best friend, as a confidant, and she remains the mother figure, the tiger mom, who say, we have to do this. We have to go and hide. I don't need your opinion. You know how I look back and the same with the Jewish people in Holocaust. Some families stayed and you know had to go to guest chambers. Other people just went to South America, went somewhere else. So how did your mom raise your kids by talking everything over and telling you her proms or she just is stoic she go on with it well you know my mom is very very strong uh character okay and we were raised uh also jehovah witness okay and oh. we were told to be obedient and to listen and to do as my mom say and that's the type of life we 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 had um so we, she was very, very strict, which is okay, because if she would have not been a strict, probably I wouldn't be the person that I am right now. Um, so friends, friends, uh, I don't think in my culture there is a, such a thing that you become your kid's friend. I think uh, you have, they can be comfortable to come and tell you and talk to you about their business, you know, all their personal stuff, especially when they grow. But my job is to be the mom and, and educate and discipline and do what I have to do. And my mom, I think, was the same way, uh, 10 times more strict than what I am, though. <laughs> yeah, so now you got why I asked that question, because there are times when I see other younger mothers, maybe our children, bringing up their children, and they were just like, oh, you're doing so well. These kids, you know, what do they know they're doing so well? So, mm -hmm. and I look back and I say, I always yelled and screamed. My mom always yelled and screamed. Is sometimes mm -hmm. a father is like, okay, 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 you know, but they know the mother is there to discipline them. So I just wonder mm -hmm. what the next generation, and I don't know if you think about it, but I always wonder, maybe I'm getting older, what our next generation of children of immigrants will grow up to be, you know? I think they're going to they gonna take a lot um, the how, how we are, you know, and I think they're going to be maybe more open mind you know because i'm i'm only 44 and i'm open mind up to a certain point you know um but i think my my daughter she has kids also and i see her interacting with the baby uh when anastasia is is gonna be 18 or or a teenager i think they're gonna have 
way more open relationship than the one that we had, you know, mm-hmm. I think, I don't And do you accept it or do you question it or do you think which is the better way to do it or there's a balance? Um, okay, so my daughter is 25 and there is things that she has to take responsibility for it and she's older, she has kids on her own. I give her my opinion. I don't agree, but then I have to turn back because she's she's even out of the house now, you know. Uh, but I'm always watching from far. My son is 18, and when it comes to schooling, there is no choice but just go to school and be somebody, you know. And when it comes to other things, uh, I remember when he he was going to turn 18, he say, "Mom, I'm turning 18, and things are going to change." And I say, why? He's like, well, I'm going to have freedom and I'm going to do whatever I want. And I say, no, while you live in my household under my room, you're going to respect and you're going to follow the rules. And we are going to talk about it. And maybe you are allowed to do whatever you want. Maybe. Right, right. <laughs> so I think I'm... I'm you know, there is some women out there, they are women to be a mother. And I am a woman to be a mother and, and to work and have my business and, and have it all. Why not? That's right. And congratulations. And I'm so happy to be able to see you because aside from being a very successful business person, you are a great partner in union with your husband you are also a great mom and that's awesome because if the first two does well your other two will do very well and they want to one day build it into whoop, you know hiring so many people and thank you thank you for joining us today thank you for having me it's been a pleasure and i admire you a lot too i i have been seeing your uh, you know, podcasts, your your shows, every time you go on the radio and talk when, when it used to be in the radio, that's when I heard from you the first time. I think you are a very, very smart woman and, and that's, uh, it's good that, that we have, you know, strong women um, working and doing something for the public and for our own families too. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.